Welcome to the Recovery Show with Bernie Z. That's me. Today I'd like to talk to um, the family and friends and those around the addict in recovery about a step called Step 5 of the Unity Program. And that step is Addicts Anonymous has but one primary purpose, to carry its message to the addict who still suffers. And that's because the, the key is to work with people who have a family member or they they have someone that they care about that's that's an addict and when that happens there's a lot of need for for support so looking to find those people and give them the opportunity to hear what it's like to be in recovery from an addict is part of that that goal of trying to help somebody else carrying a message to them of hope and of of the joy of what recovery really means that sometimes when they can't reach an addict who's almost there they will reach a loved one and that loved one is part of that, that network to reach out to so we take our message out to others and we share our stories we share our experiences so when you have an opportunity to go to a meeting that's open to family and friends and that kind of thing don't hesitate because an open meeting means that it's not just open to addicts, it's open to those who who are looking to try to understand and trying to find some semblance of, of hope for someone they care about. It's also a place where you can find support in looking for ways to help, help your addict get to that point of recovery. And that's very important. It's, it's a message that we, that we carry... With this, part of the reason Stand Tall Recovery exists today is because, in as part of my, my amends, because I don't know everybody affected. I, I mean, I'm a compulsive gambler in recovery, and I can remember sitting there doing scratch-off tickets after work, and people came in that I don't even know, and I would not have any doubt that some of them, because of what they saw me doing, became an addict. They saw the, the look, in, look on me, what I won, and that kind of thing. So there's that idea that we're reaching out and carrying that message to others who, who suffer because it's not just the addict that suffers. It's the family member. It's those people around that person who's an addict that suffer too. Um, so our goal is to reach out to, to the addict who still suffers, but also to reach out to those around them that still suffer. And by reaching out to you, we bring you into the into the fold. And then your goal is to reach out to the addict who still suffers. And it might be one we can't reach because we're not family. Or we're not friends with the person. Or we're not somehow connected to that person. But you are. So by being connect, be, by reaching out to you, we're reaching out to them. So that's part of that goal. And when we reach out to you... It's usually because we know that you've gone through a lot of things that our family members have gone through. We know the loss that, you, that you're experiencing because, because we've been on the side of the person that's, that's caused that loss. And we get to hear it. We get to see it. And one of the things that, that has been beneficial, and I'll say it, say it very clearly, and that is that <clears throat> in doing that, we reach out and we have things like what happened with happens with several of our members or the members that I've encountered where they say family members remind them of meeting nights of events that are tied to their recovery and it's not taken as a bad thing after a while it's taken as a kind of way of saying I love you I care about you I want to help you recover so that desire to to um, to quit and the desire to stop the addiction is supported by when, when, when you're encouraging, when you're when you're there and you do that kind of thing. So don't, you know, even if the addict doesn't doesn't take kindly to it, don't take it wrong. And I hope that in talking like this, I'm helping you. So 
feel free to comment below and let me know. Thank you.